It's a military academy. Colt McAllister looked at his dad sideways. They were in Washington, D.C., on what was supposed to be a summer vacation, but this didn't look like the kind of place tourists would visit, especially a 16-year-old tourist like Colt. I thought you said this was a camp. It's more like a prep school. Are you thinking about sending me away? Don't worry, Dad said, and reached over to tousel Colt's hair. You're just taking a tour, that's all. Besides, they won't admit you until you're 18. So why am I here? Because you were invited. By who? The same people who invited your brothers. This is an elite school. You can't even apply. It's strictly invitation only. What if I don't want to go into the military? That's up to you. As Colt's dad rolled his window down, a panel opened up on one of the brick columns. A mechanical arm unfolded, with a sphere like an eyeball attached to the end. Then a green light flared to life before it scanned Colt and his father. Moments later, a buzzer sounded, and the gate opened up. I want one of those for my room, Colt said, as they drove through the opening and down the winding drive. It might be a little out of your price range. I was thinking you could buy it for me. I'll have to talk to your mother. Dad didn't hide the sarcasm in his tone. It wasn't long before they pulled up to the front steps, but when his dad didn't get out of the car, Colt frowned. Sorry, but this tour is for potential cadets only, Dad said. Trust me, it's more fun that way. Is there something you're not telling me? I'll be back to pick you up this afternoon. Colt hesitated before he opened the car door. He stepped onto the sidewalk, shut the door, and then stood there until his dad rolled down the window. Why aren't there any signs? It's a top-secret facility. What kind of school is top-secret? You'll be fine, son, I promise. Colt looked over his shoulder at the massive building and felt his chest tighten. Look, if this is anything like the tour your brothers took... You're going to spend most of the day playing video games, Dad said. I hear you even get to watch a movie. Seriously? Have I ever lied to you? When I was six, you told me it wouldn't hurt when you pulled my tooth out. That was different. How? Pain is relative. What does that mean? You're just stalling. Dad? Yes? You're coming back, right? Colt knew that didn't sound very macho, but something felt off. Of course, and make sure you say hello to Lieutenant Lore for me. Dad rolled up the window and pulled away. After the car disappeared behind a bank of trees, Colt took a deep breath and walked up the front steps. Another buzzer sounded, followed by a click that released the lock. Colt pulled on the handle and walked inside. The foyer was stark reminding him of an office building, or maybe a bank. There was no art on the walls. The floor was covered in large marble tiles, and a man in a military uniform stood behind the reception area. Name? he asked, his voice monotone, as though the answer didn't matter. Colt McAllister. The man pushed a button, activating a metal sphere that rose from the countertop. It flew over Colt's head, where it hovered. There were no strings holding it in the air. What is that? Stand still, please, the man said as he looked at a monitor. It's flying. An aperture opened beneath the belly of the sphere, bathing Colt in a green spotlight as the sphere spun slowly in place. A dimensional replica of Colt flickered to life next to him. It reminded Colt of an X-ray. He could see his skeleton as well as the change in his front pocket. How is it doing that? The man ignored Colt's question. Do you have a phone, camera, or any other type of recording device? He asked. Colt shook his head. The man pushed the button once more, and the holographic image of Colt disappeared. The aperture closed, and the sphere returned to the desk. The man picked up a duffel bag from the floor and handed it to Colt. You can change in the locker room at the end of the hall. Thanks. Colt paused, looking at the sphere, then at the man, who didn't return his gaze. He had all the warmth of a robot, and there was clearly no point in asking more questions.